here with Marty McSorley. Fresh off the ice after a uh, Sunday afternoon skate. How are the legs feeling after that one? You know, I'm having so much fun. I, you know, I have had some health issues over the last few years. So the fact that I can get the skates on, get out, have some fun, and play a little shinny with some great, great people here down in Halifax and Nova Scotia, I'm really loving it. I feel like I'm back in my element. How often do you get to get out on the ice in, in these days? Well, you know, I, ha I had both my hips replaced last summer. So for me, it's a matter of getting back on the ice. So I can get back on the ice a fair bit, but I love the competitive, the friendly environment, the support here for the Heart and Stroke Foundation and how much you know love and admiration there is in the community and how much support there is in the community and how much support there is for the cause. You know, I mean, Heart and Stroke, this tournament here raises money for research. It's here to help everybody long term. It's going to have an effect on all of us on what we're able to do. We get to play hockey. We get to help out. We get to leave a good footprint. And I've met some really great people here. How proud are you, to, I guess, to have that as a you know the NHL alum, have that as a platform for yourself to be able to encourage guys to raise money for this fund? We, I think that the group of players, the alumni, is the greatest group of people in the world. I really mean that. You see all across the communities in Canada how much these guys are involved. They're living in the communities. They're part of the communities. They're coaching in the communities. They're raising their kids in the communities. They're giving back time and time again. And they're doing it very unselfishly. And, and I'm really, really proud of the group of guys. When I get the chance to come here and see a lot of my old friends and get to know some new guys that maybe I've played against a little bit or came a little bit after me, I've really, really enjoyed that. How many stories do you have to tell about Gretzky at these events? Well, they want to hear about Gretzky, but you know, the people, the fighting part is also another, it's kind of, a, I'm a bit of a dinosaur in that area where there's not a lot of fighting anymore. People do talk about it, but I, I think it's the respect for the game. When I talk about all the hours that you spend playing and how much fun I've had playing and, you know, the circumstances that the game has afforded me um, and the guys kind of really, really enjoy that. But at the same time, it comes back to just the joy of putting the skates on and playing. What's the craziest question any of the uh, boys have asked you in the locker room? Oh boy, it's off ice things. Off, that, ice, things off, ice, off ice things, you know, I played for years in, in LA. Um, I, I just think that traveling around with the Edmonton Oilers and once I start to tell a few stories, they're mystified by, you know, the people you come into contact, pro golfers, pro, pro football players, pro basketball players, and the stories behind the scenes that they're not gonna read in the newspaper. So those, that time in the locker room, is so special with these guys because they're fans of the game, they're fans of the people, and they get a human element of, of things they really will see on TV. And Gary Coleman, who actually got a <laughs> great shot with Mark Messi. Were you there that day? No, I wasn't in there. <laughs> but you know, it just uh, Magic Johnson and all the great people that are around the game, and the times we get to spend quietly, you know, and go sit in the Laker locker room and and you know, go take batting practice with the Angels and you know, talk about the players, but how down to earth they are and how human they are. And it, it kind of bridges that, that everybody here is just the same as everybody else. And we all put our skates on and get out and play. And you know, they talk here about, they're so proud of Sidney Crosby and, and Brad Marchand and, the, and Nathan McKinnon and the local players. And that's fun for me because you get to know a little bit more, more about those great players that I have a chance to meet or watch. And, be around a little bit and you become I become more respectful for them when you talk about you talk about being with the, the traveling road show with the Oilers in the in the 80s and playing in LA which team I guess Garner had more celebrity attached to it well I when we would go around Canada especially with the Gretzky Messier Grant Fuhr Paul Coffey Yari Curry it was really almost like traveling with the Beatles um, you know, a good friend of mine, Judd Bushler, played with the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan, and we would tell stories that were so similar about going into places and, you know, the people that are around and the people trying to sneak up into hotel floors and, you know, just to get autographs or what have you. Um, and, and the access that we had to things is really, really cool. In L.A., Wayne Gretzky was such an ultimate ambassador. And, you know, and I, I really believe guys like Sydney have watched Wayne and learn from Wayne and Wayne you know the way he handled himself and Wayne is extremely proud of Sidney Crosby and how he's continued on so uh, you know Wayne was such a great ambassador the people that flocked around Wayne Gretzky from Jack Nicholson to all the pro golfers to so many different people you know I had a chance to kind of see and be around that and it was it was a really great ride it was really really fun and I got a chance to to be around the great one what he did on the ice and, and I got to watch it and be a part of it and see it every day. It was it just made it magical. And you also made sure it happened. Well, yeah, but that's a job that everybody, you know, and Dave Semenko, we lost Dave Semenko last year, who was somebody that I really, really adored. And it was such a great man. And 
he did it before I did. He probably did it in a tougher time than I did. So, you know, it's it's about respect. And, you know, Wayne Wayne gets it. He Wayne, It was important for Wayne, the third and the fourth line players. Everybody in the locker room was important to him. Who, lastly, who's a guy that some of the guys you look at in the NHL now, you say he's got a bit of McSorley in him? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I look at guys that are like defensive defensemen or third or fourth line guys. Like Matty Hendricks is a guy who's played in the league for years. And I had a chance to meet him and spend a little bit of time with him. And what a quality person. And every team he goes into, every locker room he walks into, it's a better team for his presence. You know, and, and then to be around McDavid a little bit, but a guy like Darnell Nurse, that, you know, he's, he just, he's, he's such a physical specimen. And he's, he, his upside is, is really, really great. And I would like to see him continue to grow offensively because, again, he can play so many minutes, his upside. So that's somebody that I'll look at and I'll admire. Uh, is there a Marty McSorley? I guess I don't take myself so seriously that I have to think that there's a current player like me. A Wayne Simmons in Philadelphia, I watch him and I'm like, what a great player. He plays so hard. I mean, you look at him, he gives you so much, it's worth the price of admission. So I, I'm a big fan of the current guys that play, and so many of them, Jeff Carter, Kopitar, I get a chance to watch those guys closely. Jonathan Quick, it's, it's really a fun game to watch. Marty, is there anything you'd want to add about this uh, this great weekend? Yeah, you know, I, I think that the players that play in these events are, are from all the communities. They come in, and we're, we're just Canadians that are putting our skates on. And NHL players never retire. We continue to play. We just change leagues and change the hours that we'll play at and the people we skate with. And, and hockey is such a forgiving game that anybody at any caliber can get out and jump into a hockey game. And it's such a great game. And it's such a, a center of so many communities. And I just love coming up and being a part of it. I appreciate taking some time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And also, I'm just pointing this out. You're still going. <laughs> I wore that helmet you're, in the NHL. You're still going with a, yeah, a Jofa did. look? And people people laugh because there was always a little sign inside that said, not approved for ice hockey. <laughs> so, no, I wore this, and uh, I had some people. I, I know my mom wasn't really happy with me when I put it on, but it was kind of a stigma of the old Edmonton days. We cut so much of our gear off, and it was just about speed. And, you know, no shoulder pads. I didn't play with shoulder pads in the NHL, and it was just it was a different time. They block so many shots now, these guys. Right? It's crazy with with how many shots are blocking and the, the, how the equipment has come so far, the technology, but this is a throwback to the old days. It, it looks, if I leave this lying around, somebody will take it. It certainly looks like an Irish hurling helmet if you've <laughs> ever seen that sport, and that sport's even crazier than hockey. Marty, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, thank you. Thanks for watching this video. Eastling TV is the home of community content. Make sure you don't miss any of it by clicking subscribe here.